Goobertown Hobbies. Welcome to Goobertown. Welcome to episode one of Goobertown Roulette. I'm about to roll some dice, pick a random mini, and have a painting adventure. Let's see what I get. Alright, here we are rolling off for the first Goober Town Roulette. Roll one. It is a one. Oh, that is a speed paint. 40 minute, 16 color palette, two brushes. Alright, let's see what colors I need to use. Four. That's a warm color roll, so we roll again. So the first color is going to be red. And now I'm gonna roll for a secondary color. It's a one, that's a cool color roll, so I roll again. Five. Blue-green, secondary color is gonna be blue-green. Okay, now the fun part. 40 minutes to paint up a red and blue-green figure. But which one will it be? This. This is it right here. It's heavy. Why is it heavy? This is not a 40 minute paint job. All right, all right. All right, let's take a look at this model I drew. This looks like a fun one, but definitely a challenge for 40 minutes. So I'm using the time of changing my camera setup and taking this rotating shot to plan my paint scheme. Uh, with only 40 minutes, I need to be moving quickly, so I need to know what the plan is. Need to get a lot of red in there, there's a blood pool, and there's a demon face, so that should be easy. For that blue-green color requirement, I'm thinking either dwarf hair, although slayer hair is typically orange, we could do blue-green. Also dwarf pants, uh, I can make that cloth whatever color I want, so that's another option. Just taking a look at the model, seeing what blocks of color need to be there. I didn't see on the first rotation, but this demon is a hairy demon, the back of that neck. It's definitely fur. Um, what else is on there? We got some runes, we got some earrings and stuff, so taking this all into consideration and trying to plan out what colors I'm going to slap on first when the timer begins in just a few minutes here. Okay, getting to work here. I've got 16 colors from Vallejo, a paint kit there, and I have two brushes, Walmart cheap brushes that I opened up brand new for this. I am working on the big colors first. I started on the flesh because I know I need to get that down before I start on the dwarves hair. And I figured I also might need a couple coats of that. I'm doing my best to be strategic here and allow time for various coats of paint to dry. So I'm trying to skip around to the various large parts of the model. After the flesh, I started in on the blood red at the base. So Red is a required color, so I wanted to get that on first. I am thinking about making the demon's head red as well, so I decided to make the blood red a darker red, and then I can save kind of a lighter orangey red for the demon's face. Continuing to block off large colors, getting some bone on the horns there. Working very fast, fighting the clock, trying to get rid of as much primer as possible. And uh, kind of embarrassing looking back at it now, but clearly left a fair bit of primer on that bone. I'll get it later. Okay, going back in with fur. Again, going for the largest surface areas first. Um, I am trying to use a little bit of strategy in which sections I go for, kind of alternating, giving some areas time to dry, and also where I can, leaving some sacrificial areas. So a good example of that is the boots. I consciously decided to do the boots 
later in the painting so that they can be a sacrificial area. So when I'm slopping paint around, I can basically not worry about some parts in the model. It's a fool's errand to try to protect the primer when you're working this fast. Okay, went back on the flesh. I am taught to believe that dwarves are a more pink skin tone. Probably that's because there are bottles of paint called dwarf skin tone that are much more pink. So I mixed up a pink skin tone using the bronze skin tone, some red and some bone. And I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And actually it stayed fresh on the wet palette for a long time, so I used that over the course of the whole model here. Okay, now I just mixed up an orangey red for the demon's face. And it's similar to the blood color, um, but it is different. Different enough to get away with it. I would have preferred it was more different, but it'll do. Okay, I know I have a requirement of blue-green coming up, so this paint kit had one blue and two greens, so I am rapidly doing both of those color combos to see if I can get a teal or, you know, some sort of friendly turquoise out, and I'm not having much luck. I think it might be the fault of just how complex these colors are. I think these colors have a lot of different pigments in it, and so... Yeah, the, the the mixtures I got out were closer to gray or brown than they were to teal. And so right now I'm stalling. I'm just taking that straight blue and putting some blue jeans on this guy. Went back with that white again to try to make some teal or some turquoise, throwing greens in, throwing blues in, just coming up with like wolf gray or something. Just not what I'm looking for. And so I ended up calling it. I said, you know what, we're just using straight green. That is a really nice deep green. That's going to be the hair color. Maybe later I can come back with uh, a thin down blue as a wash, or maybe I can come back with a blue dry brush, but mixing greens and blues from this paint kit do not make a blue green. Um, so kind of copping out here and just doing, just doing green whiskers, green braids, green beard. Uh, he's a hairy guy. He's a proud guy. He's a happy guy. This is this is the highlight of this dwarf's life. This is what he lives for right here. Yeah, that hair really is a major component of the model though, and so um, it is taking me a lot of time to do. And also this is the first color that I've really needed to be careful on in that I am painting around the flesh that I've already put on the model. And so for when I was painting the flesh, I could be really sloppy with it and not worry about hitting the whiskers. But when I'm getting the whiskers, I need to be real careful not to hit the flesh. Um, I am still using the large brush for that. Oh, just made the switch to the small one. But I had been using the large brush, and that's the first time I used that small brush in this whole speed paint. Again, a really critical color on this model, and I would have preferred to have a teal to work with, but that just wasn't in the cards. I think I think this choice of the deep green looks way better than if I had tried to use that ugly Space Wolf gray that I got out of mixing the green and the blue. Painting the base with the available gray. In my mind, this dwarf did his fighting in the basement of a dwarven kingdom. You know, the dwarves dug deep and greedily and unleashed this demon, and then this old boy had to be sent down to deal with that situation. So imagining, you know, a deep dwarven hallway, um, stone tile sort of thing. Going back to try to hit the areas I missed, and you can actually see that I am still missing some of the bone areas, but that's all right, I'll get them eventually, hopefully. I didn't do the rim of the base yet, that's for two reasons. Uh, one, I'm trying to delay the choice between making that a black rim or a gray rim. Um, I know some people feel strongly about always painting a black rim, but eh, I think it depends on the model. The other reason I didn't paint the rim yet is because I'm thinking of maybe flicking red at this whole model, having everything be blood-soaked, in which case 
The flicking everything in blood is the second to last step, and the last step is cleaning up the rim of the base. All right, so I keep cycling through the colors, cleaning up mistakes. Get Matt Brown on there. Okay, this is my first stab at doing anything to the axe. Getting some black on there. So something I noticed about this black, this is really the first time I'd use this paint kit, but something I noticed about the black is that it's very glossy. I don't know if this is always true of Vallejo Game Color Black, or if I didn't shake this right, or what, but yeah, the, the finish is really not consistent with the rest of the model. Yeah, I put black on the boots and on the belt, and not only is it glossy, it's also more runny than I wanted it to be. I'd say pretty much every other color in the set I like. Um, you know, of course, I didn't like how the, the blue couldn't mix with anything to give new colors, but, or wouldn't mix with anything to give nice new colors. So you can see I'm uh, kind of slowing down a little bit here. And this is something I'll have to remember for next time, is that I uh, got to keep that same pace throughout. Maybe now I'm realizing that I only have a few minutes left to uh, make sure that everything is at least not primer colored. So I got steel on the axe blade, accidentally got steel on the fur, so covered everything in blood to uh, cover that up a little bit. Okay, executive decision now that I'm not going to have time to do the flicking, so I just threw a gray rim color on. And when I have a lighter color base, that's when I use a lighter color rim color. I don't like a huge amount of contrast on the base rim. I think it draws too much attention from the model itself. Feel free to disagree with me on that one. All right, got the details in on the runes. In my mind, those are stone runes. Certainly could have been bronzy or something. Um, I did have available some steel and some gold colors, but they're stone. First time I pulled out the leather brown. That's a pretty nice color, and I'm glad that this set had that. It's interesting that the paint set did not have purple, but did have a couple shades of brown Near in the end, coming back with that green. Again, a super important color. And if I'm going to nail anything on this model, that's really important. The green frames the entire dwarf's face. Try to put a little eye shadow in the eye sockets there. I think his eyes are closed, but I wanted to give it some definition. Come back for another layer of the teeth. Um, teeth can be such a fun detail. A lot of contrast between the dark red of the mouth. Some demon eyes, and that'll about do it for the speed paint here. Well, here it is. A dwarf slayer on a demon head in 40 minutes. Not great, but not terrible either, given the constraints. I do have color almost everywhere. I don't see a whole lot of primer shining through. I am reasonably happy with the color choices that I made. Um, everything seems to go pretty well together. In terms of the requirements of the competition, I got the red on there. I did not get a teal on there. I could not figure out how to make a blue-green teal. But I did throw on some blue jeans and some green hair, so a step in the right direction. C plus on that one. Um, you know, looking at the model, there's definitely details that I missed. Uh, you can see some of the armbands are flesh colored, but better than being primer colored, and it was much quicker to just paint everything flesh than to try to leave that blank and hit it later. So, all in all, not bad. Alright, the first 40 minutes went pretty well. Uh, I'm happy that I was at least able to get a base coat down, but this guy is not done. This model is way too cool to abandon here. So we're going to go into overtime, and we are going to finish this guy up right. Here we are after two hours of total painting time. So I went back, and I hit all the original colors again, 
um, thickened up those layers of paint a little bit, neatened up the edges, added a few details, and this is really where I wanted to be at the end of 40 minutes, but you know, understandably didn't have enough time to get there. But this was the plan for the first 40 minutes, and just in reality, it took me two hours to do. So you'll notice I really didn't attempt any highlighting or shading. I actually did kind of save that, so I have an idea of what I want to do for shading. So in deciding how to do some shading, I decided to stay somewhat true to the spirit of the competition in only using those original 16 colors. So what I did is I grabbed my Pledge Floor Care, which is essentially a gloss medium, and I mixed it with selections from those 16 colors to make a variety of different washes for myself. Now, I really like the consistency of the washes you get out of this. Unfortunately, it is very glossy. But I figured since the black boots and, you know, the black belt were very glossy anyway, that I'd have to dull down this model regardless, so why not? So you can see that I've made a variety of different washes. I liked some of them more than others. I really did get good use out of this black wash. I found that was really good for the gray runes and for the fur of the monster. And also, uh, you can tell since the last clip that I added some green stuff tiles to the base, and it really did a good job of picking those out as well. Here's the model after being all glossed up and shaded. You can see that there's a lot of regions of this model that take shading really well. I'm seeing especially the horns, the little designs on the runes in his beard, the crags in the demon's face, all these areas really do well with this wash, and obviously the model's very glossy, which I'm going to have to dull down, but one of the good things here is that Pledge Floor Care is absolutely a protective coat, and so this is really the varnish step of this mini. Here we are after the dull coat, and you can still see there's a little bit of a shine there, but it's dull enough so that highlight layers should be able to stick. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to bring some of those colors up to where they were before the shading layer. So just use the original colors again to start to bring them back up. And one other thing you can notice in this mini is that I did have second thoughts about the coloration for the base. So I painted that gray and put a wash on the gray, and I think that looks a little bit more appropriate than the wash over the white. Next step, starting to highlight. And here we are, building those colors back up. I was able to get that original flesh color that I mixed for this dwarf. That was still fresh on the wet palette, so I was able to start to work that back up. Did some dry brushing of that bone color on the horns. Was able to resuscitate that that flesh color for the demon as well, start to work that back up. I did one more layer of highlighting. You can see, especially in the hair, uh, I did a dry brush of a lighter color green and that turned out pretty nicely. When I was working on the flesh tone though, I wasn't getting the layering effect that I wanted. Mostly just my skill today was, was not where it should be and I just wasn't getting the flesh that I wanted. So I decided to add some tattoos to this guy just so that would be a little less noticeable. The highlighting on the demon flesh actually turned out pretty well. I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that. So this model is very close to completion now, and I'm getting this footage in because I've made a decision to do one more thing to this guy. I decided that since the spirit of Goober Town Roulette is to try new things and not worry about the consequences, I decided that I was going to flick this guy all over in blood. Partially that's to camouflage the fact that I'm not super happy with the skin here, but also that's just to try something new, and of course this is, you know, the bulk of this model is a decapitated head, so there should be blood everywhere. Here I am flicking blood. I have some Army Painter technical effect paint here, glistening blood. And I'm just using a big ol' paintbrush to try to flick droplets at this mini. And it turns out the effect is really, really fitting. It makes sense that this mini should be covered in blood. This is a slayer who has just chopped off the head of a beast he's defeated, really just for fun, really just so he can stand on it and look proud as heck. 
I also like this blood effect because of the pose the dwarf has with his closed eyes. He's really basking in something, and it wasn't until this moment I realized that he is basking in blood. He's covered in blood, and he's victorious, and he is having a great time, and that's why his eyes are closed. That was actually one of my complaints about the mini at first, is, is the fact that this guy's eyes are closed. You can get such cool expressions from eyes, and I couldn't do that with this guy. In fact, you know, I, I, I like the eyes that I did on the demon, all cross-eyed because he's dead and decapitated, but the dwarf's eyes closed, but it looks so much better covered in blood. He's just, he's covered head to toe, he's got his eyes closed, basking in the moment, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how he turned out. Alright, that about does it for Goobertown Roulette, episode one pretty happy with where I got this guy to, um, especially with that overtime painting. Got him to a decent standard. The whole point of this Goober Town roulette game is to improve my painting skills, to challenge myself, to do things I wouldn't ordinarily do. So the whole point of this is to build my painting skills. And, you know, this guy is not a perfect model by any means, but he's a really good baseline for episode one here. And hopefully as I go forward and keep on doing this, I'll just get better and better and better. So, yeah, let me know in the comments below what you would have done in terms of paint choices for this guy. Um, you know, how you would have used these 16 paints to, to bring something cool out of this model. Um, also, if anyone actually knows what this model is, please uh, post below. I got him off of eBay. He looks like a Slayer, but... I don't know if he has a, a name. I'm not even sure if he's Games Workshop, actually. So if you know, post below. All right, that does it for this time. Thanks for watching. Please tune in again soon, and let's see what I draw next.